Hey guys, Luke Warm Mining here, and by the power supply, thermal glue, and heat sinks I have here, you should know that we are working on my KS0 Ultra today. So if the new firmware came out for this, and also the overclocking firmware came out for this finally. The new firmware, it looks like from Ice River, if you're not gonna be overclocking it, looks like all it does is changes the power, or not even the power target, the temperature target of this, because these were running at like 80C, and if you went any lower than that, it started dramatically losing hash rate. Now from what it looks like, even if they're running at like 60 or 70C, they should be getting the four, full 400 giga hash. So um, please, 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 please go on Ice River's website and at least update that. Um, but if you wanna get the maximum out of this device, the T-Swift uh, software has come out finally for these, uh, where you can get these all the way up to 700 giga hash, uh, which is absolutely nuts. And they're pulling a Three, over 300 watts at that speed. Um, there's actually not a laptop brick that goes that high currently. What they're doing is they're actually using a 19 volt, 20 volt power supply and hooking up some uh, 10 gauge wires and the uh, connector onto this and running 300 watts. Honestly, I joked before about hardwiring these and I did that on a couple of mine with the 12 volt power supply. At that kind of wattage, I feel like you should probably hardwire it rather than use these uh, bullet connectors or switch it over to the six pin connector which i am i'm contemplating making for these um there was someone that was doing them but they're charging like 30 bucks to have these six pins that are just bent and soldered together that fit into the slot for these uh instead of these barrel connectors anyways so we're gonna go ahead and get this thing torn down and put on new heat sinks i've already replaced the thermal paste on this um, i'll go ahead and link right now the other video where i did the full teardown and i got this day one um, but for now on this one, what we're gonna be doing is removing this top plate right here, uh, removing the internal fans that come with its stock, because these impede the airflow a ton, as you can see. Uh, it's not straight through here, especially with those chokes right there. Um, and uh, yeah, and then replacing these little guys on the MOSFETs to help cool those down. Alrighty, so first things first, we're gonna go ahead and get these screws out. Unfortunately, my Screwdrivers have been absconded with by my daughter. Um, she grabbed the handles and was running around and I have not been able to find them. We thought it was funny. And so I realized, oh shoot, there's three of them and I am now down to zero. So uh, there were no tool bits in them, um, but she uh, ran off with them anyways. We're gonna take all these guys off real quick. Future me here, do not remove the fans. Um, I was having issues with mine. I've been posting about it all week. Wasn't able to get it to overclock. It just wouldn't clock up. And it turns out it was related to the fans. I'm not sure if it's supposed to be related to fans and it could be some other phantom thing going on. But as soon as I plugged in my fans, um, the original fans that come with it, it started mining. So uh, yeah, do not remove the fans. Skimping a little bit on the quality. comically small screwdrivers going great for me. That yeah, should be all of them. Get this guy split apart. There we go. I will say if you guys are kind of sort of, oh, look at that. Yay, look at that thermal pad already ripped. Absolutely wonderful. Definitely only the highest quality um, stuff from Ice River. Anyways, I don't know if you guys saw and you probably watched everyone else's videos on these. Um, please, 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 when you do the um, thermal paste replacement on this, take these out slowly and not all at once. So start in the centers, do like maybe a half turn or one turn each and kind of just go around and keep doing them so that they all lift at once. Because these standoffs are, are uh, if you go on the bottom sides of them, they're actually uh, thread locked onto the bottom of these little uh, standoff screws or these, uh, spring uh spring loaded screws so please um <laughs> definitely don't just sit there and, and screw this off super duper fast all at once because you will crack it you will hear the pcb um start crackling and you will break something so please do not anyways so i'm not gonna remove this again because that's how sketchy it is i don't want to remove this again i will post again a link to the other video where i already did the full teardown on this I don't think I have thermal pads for this right now. I'll have to look right now. But what I am gonna do is take these aluminum heat sinks 
and go ahead and use some thermal epoxy to glue them down. And just in case anyone was wondering, it looks like they're 1.52. So I know Red Panda went and put some 2.5s on there. I think the squish factor is fine on these. So, and there's not any um, thing really on this side. This is just more to help push the heat through. But yeah, anything that's like a 1.5 to 2.5 millimeter thermal pad should work on these. Honestly, I kind of suspect that um, Ice River or someone runs these before they send them out, like for a long period of time. Because like, look at these pads. Like, they're it's disgusting. They just they don't peel off. They don't stay in one piece. They just crumble. It's like their thermal paste too. It shows up dry. Like, look at that. That's crazy. Like, I have thermal pads that have been sitting that don't crumble as bad as these. But luckily for this, this is just to help distribute the heat out the back behind the ASIC chiplets. Um, so it does probably help a good amount, but not as much as replacing the thermal paste on the, on the other side. Oh, and I did want to go over with you guys the software on this. So from what PB Farmer and a couple others and I can understand, um, the only way that T-Swift was able to get out with the software is that he or XYYS knows someone that is at Ice River. They use an AV synchronous code now to encrypt these. And the only way you can get in is if you have the key. Um, you could brute force this and it might be possible at some point, but with the amount of speed that they have, there's no way other than someone at Ice River is giving out the uh, security codes and allowing XYYS to make the overclocking software for this. Um, what I will say is this, PB Farmer has found a way to overclock it and has overclocked his personal K0 Ultra using this port right here. It's called a UART port. Um, I'm not that technical, but I am definitely looking into it because it, it um, is interesting to me. Um, basically what it is, is this is a serial port and allows you to um, root into the device and change some of the um, permissions and stuff like that. Obviously he's going to correct me because <laughs> it's just not my area of expertise. Um, but uh, essentially what you can do is you can change the keys in the device and root into it, which allows you to have full software control over um, the device. So what does it allow you to do? Load a custom firmware, um, watch a lot more of the hardware on, well, a hardware level, um, because it is a serial in and out. It even gives you like a full Linux terminal. So um, definitely something that I'm going to be looking into. Probably not going to be for the faint of heart because typically... Um, this UR output is, I believe, four pins. There is a six pin standard, it's just not as common. Um, and this is that six pin standard. Alrighty, so we are now up and running. So I went ahead and did the update also to the Ice River Miner from Ice River. Um, I think honestly what they did with that update is they changed some of the target temperature parameters. Because I noticed that even closer to like 60, 70 degrees Celsius now, um, they tend to go over 400 giga hash. So I think there was just an error uh, when it came to their temperature targets. Anyways, so next thing we're going to do is go ahead and go to firmware upgrade. Um, and then what you're going to have to do is download the files from T-Swift. So they have both the dev fee version available and also the paid version. So you can get it as a license or a dev fee. Uh, what you'll go ahead and do is hit select file. As you can see, I have it already set up for you guys so it pulls up. And then go ahead and do the init update first. Now, I'm not exactly sure why that is required. It doesn't really go into detail. My guess is, is that is how they're checking the MAC address information and also maybe adding some new registry tables into it or some kind of variables into the miner itself. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and wait for that to go. All right, operation succeeded. So we're going to go ahead and hit OK. Let the machine restart. Hit OK again. Alrighty, the firmware has been installed. So what we're gonna go ahead and do now is go to select file and we're gonna go through and um, test each one of these ones out. So I won't personally be doing that in this video, but the way that you were to do this is to go start with L, then go to the regular and then go to H. Low, medium, high is the best way to think of it. If you have a completely unmodified KSR Ultra, um, I would stick with 505 and try the, uh, um, the low, if that doesn't work for you, medium and then high. Um, what they do request is that for the 505 that you should have these side panels off of the device um, and potentially a fan blowing in through the center. 
Um, so on the original mounting holes for a 120 millimeter fan. Uh, for 562, this is going to be the same modifications that I made on mine. And also that all y'all, if you did have KS0 Pros, um, that you did to those. So that's going to be heat sinks, um, potentially doing thermal paste on them. It's not necessary, but just seeing how crappy the thermal paste was from my stripper originally, um, I would just go ahead and replace it. Just be extremely careful taking out the motherboard. Um, you've probably seen everyone else remove it. You've seen my video of removing it. Be careful. Anyways. Same thing as that one, start with the low, go to medium, and then go to high. So I have tested this out earlier. Um, low does not work for me. I only get about 480 giga hash out of it. If I go to the medium, I will get the full 562 giga hash on average with spikes over 600. So I have seen it where it's sustained for an hour or two over 600. And then usually late at night when the temperature drops a little bit, the hash rate also comes down. So I'm gonna go ahead and select 562 um, the medium setting and hit update and that will go ahead and install the firmware so like I said for this firmware same modifications as the pro there's also 618 672 and technically 672 can push up to 700 those though are requiring at least I believe a let me double check real quick on my notes um, they are asking for the 676 at 235 watt power supply and for 700 you need at least 300 watts now those don't exist typically as laptop chargers so you will need to go buy a bench power supply like the ones that i use for my 12 volt ones um, they make those in 20 volt 19 volt um, 24 volt where you can just adjust it down to 19 volts they make that version um, so you just make sure it's at 19 volts and then use 10 gauge or 8 gauge wire to double check what the amperage rating is on it but use the correctly sized wire for the amperage and then connect it to um, that barrel connector though so, i will say this i don't know what barrel connector they're using and if they're using any of the ones that are just screw on ones where you can put the wire into them and screw it down uh, i suspect those are going to burn up very very quickly i almost would suggest just hard wiring it i'll double check and see if it's still possible, the same mounting location is there where you can scratch the pad off and attach the wires. I'd almost, I, I wouldn't even try to do the barrel connector. People have and say it works fine. I, I personally wouldn't. I see that as being not only a fire hazard, but a really good way to burn up the connectors on either end too, even if they don't combust into flames, just shorting it out. So, um, you know, be careful. I'd say if you have your power supplies from doing your KS0 pros just stick with 562 that's more than enough um, and I saw on the regular one on the watt meter I was pulling 173 watts from the wall on that one on 562 not low on the regular setting so gonna go ahead and hit OK hit OK operation succeeded and that's it if you want to revert what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to file you're gonna um, go ahead and upload the revert one hit update and then when it goes to that screen where it said press ok or cancel hit cancel exit out of the message and then do the restore factory settings that will wipe the firmware off of it i have now done it three times as long as you do it in that order install the remove the install the file that says revert update hit update cancel out once it says um succeeded Cancel again when it says restart and hit restore factory settings and hit OK. You will be fine. You will not brick it. It will go back to factory settings. So if you have any questions or any comments, concerns, anything like that, or findings that you guys have had, feel free to leave them down below. Obviously, like and subscribe. I know I've been bad, guys. I've been extremely busy lately. Um, I also was having, as you probably saw in some of my shorts posts, I was having issues with the software. Um, I know I mentioned it earlier in a voiceover because this was recorded much later, but please leave the fans, the stock fans plugged in, whether they're just draped off the side or put on top because the software, for whatever reason, I think it might be checking the RPMs of the fan, does not like having them removed. It was not an issue with the Pro. It is a Pro issue with the Ultra. So leave those fans plugged in. You won't have any issues if you're getting zero you know, gigahertz out of it, but it is still booting up. It is more than likely because you have the fans unplugged. So, 
Uh, like I said, leave the fans plugged in. And then, uh, was there anything else I need to cover? Uh, no, that's about it. I am going to go ahead and order the uh, serial reader so I can do UART to serial to USB to see if maybe I can get access to the KSR Ultra and maybe do some manual overclocking with some help from PP Farmer. So, anyways, y'all take care. Have a good weekend. And uh, see you later.